Holy Spirit, thank you for just filling each and every one of us today. Thank you, God, for all that you have for us today. And God, I know that there are people here today with heavy needs and burdens and things that they just can't do on their own. But if, God, if I know anything about you, that you are here to be with us, and that you reside and you dwell within us. And Holy Spirit, you are here to be our great comforter. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would draw in close to those that need you most today. That you would wrap your loving presence around each and every one of us. And Lord, help us now as we go into this beautiful place of peace that we all have within us. And we are so grateful for the things that we'll be reminded of today. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. Wow. That feels good. You guys feel it? Right? That beautiful energy to hear that. And that's actually what we're going to talk about today, is remembering your peace. Now, here's the thing, folks. I have nothing new to share with you today, all right? But what I love about coming to service like this is that I'm just here to remind you of those things that you already know. Because sometimes those things that we're seeking out there are not out there. They all reside right here. And sometimes just being reminded, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. That's what's great about scripture. Sometimes you can read verses and it's like, you know, you see a verse in Psalms or Proverbs or in the New Testament. And you're like, oh, and for that moment, for that day, it speaks to you in a very certain way. But if you wait and you come back to it a few weeks later, you're like, oh, I never thought about it like that. It just changes. It's like a multifaceted jewel. And it, depending on where you turn it and where you look at it, it depends on what you see. And it's just really beautiful in that way. So today we're going to talk about peace. And so when I was praying, I was like, all right, Lord, what, what are we going to, where are we going today? And he was like, you know what? There's a lot of turmoil that's going on in the world. And I was like, there certainly is. And there's a lot of things that are very unsettling and things that we just are not really aware of what's going to happen. And that can create a lot of anxiety. That can create a lot of unrest. And I see that in my practice when the folks come in that I'm able to bless and to work with. And anxiety is a big, big deal. So I was like, all right, so how can we counteract? The effects of anxiety. Well, let's remember the peace that we have within us. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go in. Do you know that peace is mentioned 92 times in the New Testament? Now, hang on. I'm not going to go through every scripture of 92 times in the New Testament, okay? I am going to mention a few. But because we are in a unity church and we are good metaphysical folk, and we got an incredible metaphysical bookstore back over here, um, the metaphysical meaning of peace is actually peace, harmony, and tranquility derived from the awareness of that beautiful Christ consciousness. All right. Now, this is how this is how you activate it. This is how you work. This is the key to make it activate. It's through steadfast affirmations of peace. It's keeping your mind centered on peace. Okay. Because as we teach, where our thoughts go, what what is it? What you hold in mind comes forth in time. Right? And if we're holding forth a lot of anxiety, if we're holding forth a lot of, oh, what's going to be going on? Then guess what? You're going to get more of that that comes into your life. Okay? But if we say, you know what, God, thank you that I'm a peaceful person, that I trust you, then guess what's going to happen? That beautiful trust, that beautiful peace is going to come in there. Um, so a few scriptures, Galatians um, 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In our, in our reference today, John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, but not as the world gives, but as I give you. And then it ends it by saying, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be fearful. That's the, those are Jesus' words. It's like, hey, you're going to be fine because I've got this. In John 16, 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world. And in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. And guess what? Because he has overcome the world, he came to say, guess what? You can overcome the world. And that's one of the things I love about Christ is when he came in, he was like, hey, don't worship me. Don't, don't exalt me to where I am. He's just reminding us, it's like, these things that you've seen me do in this lifetime, 
you can do the same things. You can do them. They're right there. But whatever reason, we have this block that's here. Sometimes we have a block that's here, believing that we can't do it. But Christ says, I have overcome the world, which means that you have the ability to overcome the world. Now, I will tell you this. Sometimes that ability, it's tough because we go through things and it's like, boy, I didn't expect that. You know, Pastor Elizabeth, we love you so much. But I, boy, when you were dancing with the stars, I, I guarantee you didn't expect all that to happen. But you know, but you're here and God's giving you that strength. And we love you and we bless you and just so, so happy the way that God continues to strengthen your life. So thank you. God, but thank you for allowing me to be here today. God bless you. Thank you. And we'll finish in Philippians 4, 9. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put this into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So these are just good reminders in scripture just about peace and about how that can work. Now let's talk about, the you know me, I'm a very practical kind of guy. That's the Virgo line that I got, okay? If you know anything about Virgos, it's just we're very compartmentalized sometimes. We're very practical about how things work. But this is, this is, these are great. So the spiritual meaning of peace refers to the state of inner tranquility, harmony, and wholeness that stems from a deep connection with one's true self, the universe, or with the divine. Now this type of peace transcends external circumstances. So this peace that we're talking about, no matter what's happening out in the world, we can transcend that. We can overcome that because it cannot be shaken by life's challenges. And spiritual peace is not just the absence of conflict or problems, because boy, we've got, we've got conflict and problems most days, but it is the profound sense of well-being and contentment that arises from an intimate connection with God. It involves aligning our thoughts and our emotions and our actions with the highest value and ideals that create a balanced life within us. Spiritual peace is rooted in our deep connection with divine. It's our deep connection to who God is. But more importantly, the connection that you are through God. Okay? So, because God in you. It's like, it's just, it's this beautiful thing. No matter how you spin it, God is within you regardless. And we can tap into that. That's truly what changes things. But spiritual peace involves aligning our thoughts, emotions, and our actions with our highest values and ideals. And it often is cultivated through practices such as meditation, prayer, mindfulness, and acts of compassion. And if you need some good peace, if you're having a rough week, we are so grateful for the Diksha blessing that goes on here. We are so grateful for the beautiful work that Deb does to be able to bless people when they come in. Because sometimes just having somebody to know that somebody's there for you, that's just knowing that you can make a phone call or knowing that, you know, and I tell my clients sometimes, it's like, hey, you're going through a rough time? Send me a text. Say, hey, send me some love. And I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, I love it when that happens. And then you just pause and you send that beautiful love out and then just watch how it just makes everything just smooth over. It's a beautiful thing. Um, achieving spiritual peace is a lifelong journey. It's not a one and done kind of thing. Because we've just got to keep working at it. we got to keep working at it. How do you get good at what you do? You keep working at it. So we, we work at helping to grow our self-awareness, our introspection, and our personal growth to help develop and to cultivate what a peaceful lifestyle might look like. Um, there are seven aspects of the spiritual meaning of peace, which I thought were really cool. One, inner peace. Um, that deep sense of calm and tranquility within ourselves leading to the awareness of acceptance. And a good way to sort of get that inner peace is through meditation, prayer, and mindfulness. And that's one of the many things I love about Unity Church and about what we stand for is that we are um, all about that mindfulness and being meditative and just being able to go deep within. Um, another way to achieve the spiritual meaning aspects of peace is through harmony. And that's a balance of coexistence of different energies or elements promoting unity and understanding, and a good way to achieve that is through yoga, tai chi, and community gatherings. And I love today how there's going to be such beautiful harmony after the service with our birthday celebrations. And just because we don't have any birthdays necessarily now, um, we can celebrate each other. So Linda, thank you for, for making that point to know. We can celebrate each other because we need each other, especially now we need each other with everything that's going on. 
Another spiritual aspect of peace is compassion. The empathetic understanding and connection with others that promotes kindness and love. And the way that we can really cultivate that compassion in our lives is through volunteering, altruism, which is basically charitable giving and acts of kindness. So they say, you know, if you're sort of like, you got the mully grubs and you feel like that you're down and out, go volunteer, go to a rest home, go give love, like just like do something to get out of your head. Because, you know, the thing about this guy up here, man, this could be your best friend or it could be your worst enemy. <laughs> you know, that mind. And there are some days that you're firing at all cylinders, and there are some days you can't even get that thing started. <laughs> okay? But being able to tap in to the peace that we have, to be able to, to connect with that, is able to calm our mind when we're having those anxious thoughts. When we're like, what are we going to do? It's like, we're going to trust and we're going to believe that everything is going to be okay. This is a very, um, really big one right here for a lot of people. How do you cultivate inner peace? Forgiveness. That's a big one sometimes. Forgiveness, the act of letting go of past grudges or resentment or allowing healing and emotional freedom. But more importantly, sometimes self-forgiveness. You know, we're really good at offering grace to other people for maybe their mess-ups or the way that things didn't seem to go. But we're not so good about giving grace to ourselves and saying, hey, it's going to be okay. Because guess what? We've gone through a lot of stuff in this world. All right? Not only this world, but other lifetimes and other things that we've lived and how sometimes we have that residual that comes in as well. Offering forgiveness. Another way is through gratitude, the appreciation and acknowledgement for blessings and abundance in one's life. Trust, the belief in divine guidance, promoting faith and surrender, and finally, inner wisdom, the connection to our inner voice or intuition, allowing our personal growth and self-discovery. And guys, I can't emphasize that enough, that inner wisdom, okay? Because each and every one of you are innately connected to who divine is, to who God is. Do not forget that. You do not have to look outside of yourself to find that. It is all built in. And when you trust that intuition, that, that, that gut, you know, you have that beautiful third eye that you're able to sort of see what's happening. But more importantly, you've got your beautiful solar plexus to feel what's happening. I mean, you've heard it, people talk about, oh, trust your gut. Yes, trust your gut. All right. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not. So run. Okay. Just leave. It's okay to do that. Now, there are wonderful um, um, facts about spiritual meaning and peace. Spiritual peace comes from within, and it's not dependent on external factors. That's an important thing. It's often described as a sense of inner calm, and it's not influenced by temporary situations or emotions. And attaining spiritual peace can have physical and mental health benefits. Meaning, studies show that it can reduce stress, improve emotional regulation, and boost our immune function. But more importantly, if we stay in that portion of turmoil that we can find ourselves in sometimes, that can create inner struggle within your system as well. You know, what I love about the work that I do is different organs within your body hold different frequencies. They, they're connected to different things. And when I'm working along with folk, and, and I, especially when I get to their spleen, the spleen is all about ruminating thoughts. That hamster wheel that goes and goes and goes. And our liver our liver, our beautiful liver, so important. It's all about anger. If we don't deal with anger in a good and efficient way, our liver is going to like shut down. Our poor kidneys, God bless our kidneys, they're all about fear, okay? And, you know, sometimes we can stay in that sense of fear. And, you know, what happens if, if you stay in that sense of fear? Unfortunately, we get those kidney stones. And it's like, well, that's not a good thing. Our friend, the gallbladder, is so important because if you don't deal with the fear that we that we struggle with sometimes, it can move up into the gallbladder, and the gallbladder is fear personified, which is rage. There is a there is an epidemic of people getting their gallbladders removed. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, because people are not getting, they're not dealing with the anger and the rage and the stuff that's in their lives, and so it's like, ooh, gotta take that out. You know, and God bless my beautiful mom. It'll be two years in September since she's transitioned. It was so beautiful. We were having a, a my brothers and I were meeting um, yesterday. And as we were sitting and talking and laughing, this beautiful, big yellow butterfly just.
just like boop, appeared out of nowhere and just flittered, flittered, flittered right along with me. And then it just flittered right away. And anytime I see yellow butterflies, I'm like, hey, mom, you know, she's still with us. She's still here to remind us. And each and every one of you, you probably, people see cardinals sometimes. People see, you know, dragonflies, whatever it is. But you know that your loved ones, they are still with us. So it's, it's beautiful. All right, where was I going with that thought? Anywho, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let's get back on track to peace. All I'm saying is that your body, if you don't deal with what's going on with that forgiveness for yourself, that's where I was going. If you don't deal with the forgiveness of self, it can sometimes manifest within you. We want you to be healthy. We want you to have a beautiful life. Forgiveness is a significant aspect in attaining spiritual peace. Letting go of negative emotions such as anger, resentment, facilitating inner healing, and building strong relationships with others. Because when you can forgive yourself, then you're able to love yourself. And if you can love yourself effectively, then you're able to love everybody else effectively. So that's a good that's a good thing. Peace is a state of mind that we can achieve through meditation, prayer, or spiritual, spiritual practices like we've talked about. Um, and this is an important part of it, too. It's an acceptance of the present moment without judgment. Whew. That's a big one. You know, it's my word for the my word for the year was growth. And I'm so thankful for the opportunities that I've had for growth this year. Going to Peru, going to Lilydale, you know, with the books that I've read, some of the other courses that I've taken. That's a wonderful thing. But more importantly, um, being able to stay in the present moment without judgment. My theme for the year is trying to be more non-judgmental. And I gotta tell you, thank you. That's a tough one. Because society conditions us. What do we do? We judge. America's got talent. What do you have? You have four judges. Oh, this person did great. No, they didn't do that. Oh, this person did fantastic. We're dude, we're having the Olympics right now. Go team USA. All right. We've done really well this year. And what I love about the Olympics is it seems to bring people together, and there's this beautiful camaraderie that no matter what's going on, it's like, oh, did you see that we won like this relay or that we did good in swimming or this and that? There's this beautiful sense of encouragement, but it was also about we have judges, okay? You know, fault. Oh, they stepped over the line. Oh, you know, they didn't do what they needed to do. We judge, we judge, we judge. But if we can live in the moment without judging, that is so so important. And of course, social media doesn't help us in any at all. I'm this close to being off all social media completely. Because remember how we talked about our beautiful friend the spleen, how it keeps those hamster wheels a going? Sometimes you can be having a good day and you get on social media and you'll see somebody's post and it completely just wrecks everything. You know? And it's like, man, I didn't need to see that or I didn't need to hear that. All right? So that's why we need to live in the moment and now because this is all we have right now. We don't know when our time to transition is going to happen. We don't know. Pray for our friend, dear Sandra Kay. Um, she lost um, a beautiful family member this week. And just happened just like that. Beautiful 27-year-old girl stepped out of her car and got hit by a truck. It's like, what? And I guarantee you that morning when she got up and she was having her day, she would have never guessed that. We don't know when, so that's why we have to live in the moment now. Love each other now. Call your friend. Send them a text. Don't wait until after they're gone. I love the fact that the living eulogies, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about this, but basically it's like, you know, we get this beautiful eulogy when somebody has deceased and they're laying in the coffin in front of us. But how would it look if we had this beautiful, like, sort of a throny chair right here and we bring somebody, like Mary Stewart, we bring her up here and we're like, you know what? Let me tell you all the good things about Mary Stewart. And I just start ticking off all these things about Mary Stewart. And then somebody else is like, oh, I want to tell you about Mary Stewart. You know, Mary, thank you for that time that you did this or that. And how wonderful. See, she, she's sitting right here smiling right now. I don't know if you can see her. She's just grinning. Because you know what? It feels good when, when we get those beautiful accolades. Because sometimes we don't think that we matter. And guess what? You do matter. You matter more than you realize. You have such a Incredible worth. Oh my Lord, you have so much worth. And if you could just see that, if you could see what God sees when God looks at you, you'd be completely amazed. Completely amazed. Because each and every one of you are beautiful.
beautiful, divine, and perfect beings, your beautiful sons and daughters of the Most High. Perfect in every way. And the only thing that keeps us from really believing that is this right here, and sometimes this right here. But if you would allow yourself to sink into how that feels, boy, how good that feels. Let's do that now, as a matter of fact. I want you to close your eyes. We're talking about peace today. And there's a beautiful thing that WG, you do sometimes that has really made an impact in my life. And we do that beautiful oh. That beautiful is with me. Let's all say that together. That's a very practical way that you can get to that peaceful state. The reason that inner peace is so important, it helps us to let go of negative emotions like we talked about. When we cultivate that peace, we become more patient and compassionate and understanding towards ourselves and others. And that inner peace can help us stay calm and centered in difficult situations. Now, how peace differs from happiness. This is important. When I read this, I was like, oh, I never really thought about it like that. Although peace and happiness are often used interchangeably together, they are not the same thing, and they are essential to understanding the difference. So, peace is a state of mind that is achieved through spiritual practice such as meditation and mindfulness. And guess what? That little ohm that we just did is a great first step into that mindfulness, okay? Being intentional about cultivating peace. Peace, okay, like we talked about. So, on the other hand, happiness is an emotion that is more feeling and is often triggered by external factors such as achievement or experiences or winning a new car on The Price is Right. What? I want a car on The Price is Right. I mean, as a kid, that was one of my favorite shows, you know? And when they went to the good old showcase showdown or when the woman spun the wheel that she won $1,000, Oof, like all the joy and the happiness, and you can feel that within them as they win that. Happiness is different from peace, okay? So that's a good example of like, oh, happiness, wow, I got a new puppy, yay, come here. You know, you get to pet your little dog or your little kitty, and it just brings you so much happiness, brings you so much joy, but that's different, different than peace. Peace and happiness can complement each other, but they are not interchangeable. We can experience happiness without inner peace, but it's impossible to achieve lasting peace without happiness. So it goes together. They go hand in hand together. Now, if we look at the different religious beliefs of what peace is all about, I really thought it was very fascinating about our dear Buddhist friends. Our dear Buddhist friends is a religion that emphasizes inner peace. They're all about peace. They believe that true peace begins with inner peace, compassion, and focusing on the present moment, like we about earlier, okay? Because they believe that inner peace is called nirvana, and this is a state achieved by reaching, re reaching complete understanding, knowledge, and the absence of desire and suffering. So our dear Buddhist friends are all about peace. Our dear Islam friends, peace is seen as the ultimate objective for individuals. Muslims believe that they must maintain peace within ourselves and towards others. Of course, our, our dear Christian friends, all right, our dear Christian friends, they believe that peace comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. By developing a personal relationship with God, Christians can find peace that transcends all other standings. And I think that most of us will probably find ourselves in that bucket, okay, as far as our, our connection to who divine is and through scripture and what that looks like. And our beautiful um, Hindu friends are all about achieving inner peace through spirituality ascribed through the teachings that they go through. 
um, but, but there are some great ways to integrate compassion and forgiveness into our daily lives. Like we talked about earlier, if we can practice self-compassion, treat yourself with the kindness, care, and support that you would offer to a friend in need. And this includes acknowledging your feelings, being kind to yourself, and letting go of self-judgment or criticism. All right? So we got it starts at home. All right? It starts here. Forgiving and loving yourself here so you can forgive and love and help as we go out there. Because it's tough out there. We want to keep that peace. Cultivate empathy. Try to put yourself in another person's shoes and imagine how they might be feeling. Because I've met a lot of people that it's easy to judge, especially our beautiful homeless population that's here in Western Salem. We drive by and we see them on the road. And sometimes I feel compelled to give them money and to offer them assistance. And sometimes I don't. But if we were to put ourselves into their shoes, it's like, whoa. You know, we never know where people where people have come from. People just like us, who in three or six months' time find themselves living on the streets. And it's like, man, how did that happen? We never know. So we can't judge. Cultivate empathy. Practice forgiveness like we talked about. Letting go of anger and resentment and grudges that can be really hard. And when we're able to do that and forgive ourselves and love and accept ourselves for just exactly who and how we are, that is a very wonderful thing. Now, finding inner peace does not mean we should turn a blind eye to the suffering and the injustices that are happening in our world. Instead, we can cultivate a balanced approach that combines personal growth and social action. This is important, to be socially active. Start with yourself. Focus on your own spiritual and emotional growth so that you can be more peaceful and compassionate person. Engage in activities and services of kindness. Volunteer, donate, charity, or perform small acts of kindness for others. Um, these actions can help you connect with others and make a more impact in your community. You can be an advocate for change. Perhaps you can use your voice or your resources to make your community and the world a more just and peaceful place. And this can include signing petitions, attending rallies, writing to your elected position, um, officials. And please do us all a favor this November and vote. Go out there and we can change things by voting. And that's all I'm going to say about political things because I don't think polit polit politics and religion sometimes can be like oil and water for some people. But how you can change things, vote. Do those things that you can make a matter. Now, um, we're getting to the, a good shape of this. Releasing negative energy and embracing, and embracing what it is that we know that we are. So what the spiritual meaning of peace, letting go, releasing negative energy, and embracing positive change in our life, finding peace in our lives is an ongoing journey. It's a feeling of harmony, calmness, and freedom. But true peace comes from within ourselves, like we talked about earlier. And the dangers of holding on to negative negativity and grudges, holding on to negativity and grudges can take its toll on our physical and emotional health. It can lead to stress, anxiety, depression, and even physical ailments like we talked about earlier. Negativity and grudges can create a sense of resentment, anger, and a lack of forgiveness within us, which then causes us not to be able to forgive other people. But letting go of these negative emotions can help us find true peace within ourselves. Now, there's an incredible resource that if you haven't done yourself, if you haven't um, like really gotten this resource, I would recommend that you do. Because it changed my life personally. And I want to publicly thank my friend WG for making this recommendation. There's an incredible author. Her name is Byron Katie. And she has written a book called Loving What Is. Are you familiar with this book? Yeah? So you guys are familiar with that. Let me just give you a, a sort of an overview about Loving What Is Is. Because I have found that that has really helped me in my personal journey with getting that place of center. So, Loving What Is is a step-by-step -step mode of inquiry that is built around four questions, often called the work. That's what she calls it. The work. And it helps us free ourselves from our suffering, our delusions, and our limited beliefs. So, there are four really quite easy, simple questions. One, is this thought that I'm currently having, is it true? Okay? And sometimes we're like, well, of course it's true. All right? But question number two says... Am I absolutely sure it's true? Do I really know that? Because sometimes we can think something is true, but then we realize, well, maybe it's not. Okay? Can I interpret it the way that I see that as a different way? Three, how does that thought make me react? How does that make me feel? And then number four, 
Who would I be without this thought? Okay? So, let's put it down to practicality. Because I was thinking this morning, I'm like, alright, Lord, I need a good analogy for this. Alright? So, we'll use two, maybe three. Um, but one, um, have you ever, like, my wife is like, we'll be backing out of the driveway. And she's like, oh, I think I forgot to turn off my flat iron. Okay? Or back in the day when we used to iron, because thank God for dryers, because that's my new iron. I just throw it in the dryer and you'll be fine. <laughs> okay? Did I leave the iron on? Or I think I left the stove on. Okay, we have that consuming thought. Well, is it true? Well, I don't know. Exactly. And I'm like, honey, I'm sure you un I'm sure you unplugged your flat iron, your curling iron. I'm sure you did. Alright? So how does that thought make you react? Oh no. This has happened. Okay? How would you feel if you realized that you could, how would you be without that thought? Well, I'm sure I've unplugged it. And I can let it go. I can be at peace. It sounds pretty simple, but holy cow, is it really effective. And you can use that with anything. Most of the time, it's just relationships. Okay? I sent, I sent my person a text message and they didn't hear back. So they must be mad at me. Well, is that true? Well, maybe. I don't know. Well, how, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes, me, it makes me feel terrible because, like, they should respond back to me. I sent them a message. They should respond back. Well, what if they were busy? What if they didn't receive your text? What if, what if they were in the bathroom? <laughs> you know? What, what if they were cooking? Maybe they were on the other line. Maybe something else was going on. How could you feel if you could let go of that? Well, yeah, that makes sense that, you know, they weren't angry with me. They weren't upset with me because they didn't answer me back immediately. That's right. Because life happens. And people have good intentions. Hey, it happens to me all the time. People will send me a message, and it, it may be 24, 36 hours before I'm able to respond back to them based on a lot of things that are going on in my life right now. But you know what? I try to stay on top of it. But those four simple questions, if we really think about that, is this thought true? Am I absolutely sure that it's true? How does this thought make me react? How does it make me feel? And who would I be without this thought in my mind? So, some takeaways from that. Number one, teaches us to what? Master our thoughts. All right? Master our thoughts. Did you know that stress isn't caused by the people or events in your life? That they're caused by your own interpretation or the actions of the events that take place in your life? Oh, that's a big pill to swallow. Let me get a piece of, let me get some water here to help swallow that one down. Stress isn't caused by the people or events in our life. But how do we interpret? How do we interpret what's going on in our life? For example, if you're anxious because you think your partner doesn't love you anymore. It's not the assumed lack of love that is hurting you, but your interpretation of your partner's feelings towards you. And to overcome these harmful thoughts that spiral you down, you need to change your thoughts. Like we talked about earlier, change your thoughts, change your life. And Corinthians talks about taking every thought captive. Okay? Troy, you stink. What? Do I? I don't stink. Okay? Or it could be whatever. It, thoughts come in. Stupid thoughts come in sometimes. Like, well, where did that come from? All right? Take every thought captive. Master your thoughts. Two, turn stressful thoughts around. Meaning, the work is learning how to turn your thoughts around by going deeper to discover the truth about your feelings, the truth about the situation, the truth ultimately about yourself. You'll approach your problems from a different angle and then answer your question again, but this time it's going to be a different answer. Using the example of feeling anxious as you think your partner does not love you anymore, consider alternate scenarios. Perhaps the problem is that you don't love your partner. <gasps> That's called reflecting, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes we project onto people the things that we actually feel about ourselves. And we don't even know we're doing it sometimes. People will be like, are you okay? And it's like, yeah, I'm doing great. Why? Because it, it's not me. It's them. And that's not a judgment or a criticism, it just is. Now, there are sometimes like, Troy, are you okay? He's like, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> Thank you for asking. You know, this is how we can pray and make it better. All right? But sometimes we project our feelings on other people. 
because we don't want to deal with what's going on with our own life. And so, three, if we can focus on the things that we can change, focus on the things that you can change. I do a lot of hypnosis with people about anxiety, okay? And how we end up our hypnosis session while you're in that beautiful deep sea of hypnosis is focus on the things that you can change. Focus on the things that you can make a difference in and then leave the rest of it to God to take care of it, okay? How many times have you become upset due to the weather forcing us to cancel something that we were really looking forward to? Man, my daughter's gonna get married. Yay! But it rained all day Saturday. <laughs> all right? So we focus on that. All right? It does you no good to stress over things you can't change. Can we change the weather? No, we cannot. You know, sometimes we can, like, maybe blow storms away sometimes. But overall, you know, we had... Thankfully, I hope everybody was safe this week with um, Debbie that came through. You know, we got a lot of rain. Um, hopefully, nobody was devastated by any of that. We couldn't change that. It just came through. It just happened. All right? So it does no good to stress about the things you can't change, as unfortunately, frustration doesn't force the situation to change. Therefore, happiness can only come from a changing, changing the things that you are in control over. Rather, making small changes in your life will lead to greater control. And therefore, greatest satisfaction of your happiness. Well, my daughter's getting married. It's raining outside. And we were going to have an outside wedding. So what do we do? We move it inside. Was it as glamorous as it could have been? No. But did they get married? Yes. And do they love each other happy? Yes. See how that changes the scenario? We could have got all bent out of the frame because all that's happening. But if we change our perspective on what that looks like, that really changes things. Applying these four questions to specific problems in our life will enable us to see what's troubling us in a different light. Don't take your thoughts so personally. Sometimes they just appear from nowhere. No one is responsible for your suffering. Being in the role of victim is a trap. And, I'm, I'm, and I say that like, yeah, I have found myself in victim mode sometimes. But when I'm able to take myself out of that victim and go to the victor, you just change that, you change that scenario. It's like, oh, all of these bad things aren't happening to me. I can overcome these things by doing this. So just change that thing around right there. Um, it is not your thought to, okay, this is cool. It's not your thoughts, but your attachment to the thoughts that causes the suffering. It hurts when we argue with reality, therefore becoming a lover of what is. We can just be like, all right, it is. you've heard that expression? It is what it is. I say that frequently. It is what it is. And being okay with that. It's like, okay, that's just how it is. Because everybody's on their own journey. Everybody's doing their thing. And we can look at other people's lives without judgment, like we talked about earlier. Okay? And what we can do if we see somebody going through a particularly tough time, we can send them love. We can send them energy. We can pray that they're on their path, they're on their own journey. Move away from untrue thoughts that are causing me suffering. Like we talked about, everyone is a mirror image of yourself. Your own thinking comes back to you. So many more things I could say about that. And, and there really are. If you, if you really want to get a great resource in that way, Myron Katie, loving what it is, thank you, WG, for that recommendation. So, is it true? Do we really know it's true? Okay. How would I feel if I could let that go? See how it changes your perspective on that. Folks, inner peace is achievable. You gotta work at it, all right? But it's possible. And no matter what happens between now and the rest of the year of how things go on, we can stop, we can focus, we can accept what is, it is what it is. We can continue to trust God, cultivate that deep peace within ourselves, and we can continue to move forward. I think sometimes the reason that people don't ascribe to Christianity or belief in God or a higher power is because they see people who are connected to that and who ascribe to that, but they don't live it. And it's like, well, why would I want to go and believe what you believe if you don't even believe what you believe? It's just something else to think about, too. So just live it. You can live it, folks. You've got the ability to do it. 
So thank you so much for listening today. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for your continued support of Unity Church and the good work, Pastor Elizabeth, that you and all of you beautiful folk here are doing. Your hearts are so beautiful. And I encourage you to just keep living life. Keep living in peace. You got this. You can do it. We need each other. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this beautiful ability to remember our peace. We have everything that's already built in. Help us to know and to remember that. God, I pray that you would bless the fellowship after our service today. God, Lord, I pray that you would help us to take the peace that we know that we have within ourselves and being able to take it out into the world to change the world for the better. And we are so, so grateful for that, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank each and every one of you guys for being here today. I am in a production of Princess Diana the Musical down at Theater of Lights, which is pretty fun. God bless Princess Diana. The things that you learn about that woman during this, like this whole course of things. You know, she was royalty, but she did not have it easy, let me tell you. All right? Um, the reason I tell you that is we have a rehearsal that starts today at noon. So I'm going to have to slip out. But let's give it up for our beautiful pastor, Pastor Elizabeth. Let's bring her forward. She's going to come forward, and she is going to um, close our service today. God bless you. I hope I see you again. I love you. Pray for you. Thank you so much.